Wednesday, August the 23rd. Lake level is about the same as it was last week. It's just uh, hovering right around 917. It, it goes up a couple inches, comes down a couple inches, but about the same as it was last week. Water temperatures, you know, it might have warmed up a little bit. It's 81, 82 degrees. But I think the, you know, the fishing's still pretty tough. You'll probably get me get tired of hearing me say this. But you know, I've talked quite a bit about how the shallow bite had been my best deal. And, you know, put the trolling motor down and cover a lot of water with a whopper plopper and a crankbait. Well, it, it doesn't always work. You know, some days it does. Uh, my grandson and I fished a tournament this past Saturday. And I had had a couple really good days I was really excited about. Uh, fishing the tournament Saturday and wondering about which ones we was going to keep, which ones we was going to call. Well, after about six hours of having to troll the motor down and throwing that whopper plopper and a crankbait, we didn't have that problem because we ended up with like two keepers in about a six hour span there. Uh, but you know, I've had a few good days. I was down by the dam Monday, the day they had the eclipse, and the fish seemed like they really bit good about an hour before the eclipse, but we did catch some in the morning down there on wiggle warts. And we caught several down there on a football jig and uh, either a big shaky head or a wobble head. And what I've got on here, it's a pig sticker, it's a pig rig, it's a 5 8 ounce. And I've got a, a watermelon candy magnum zoom finesse worm on there. And I've been throwing this and a 5 8 ounce football jig and it seems like I've been keying on the brush piles 18 to 20 feet deep on the main lake and green pumpkin orange uh, PBJ or green pumpkin purple work and I'm using a, either a zoom a speed craw for a trailer or like a strike king rage craw or even a baby craw but it seems like uh, you know I'm starting to find a little bit more of a consistent bite on some of the conservation rock piles and brush piles, but you got to find them in that 18 to 25 foot. Now today we was up in uh, Ants Creek area, and we probably had you know five good keeper large mouths by like nine o'clock, and then the whopper plopper bite died. I never did. We never did catch any on the crankbait this morning, but then we caught some on this same bait here and the football jig out of some brush piles. Now, we've got this new, uh, my grandson seen these new real loose rods and reels, the, the my crush units. He said, Papa, he said, you got to get some of them. They're pretty awesome looking. Well, I went in the Sportsman Factory outlet and got a couple of them yesterday. They're under $200 for the rod and reel. And I've got reels that are $250, $300 by themselves, but I have never had a reel that I can cast as far as this one. It just... Uh, Kind of blew me away. It's amazing, but it's a, a seven foot medium heavy rod, 7.5 to 1 ratio. And they got left hand and right hand, and like I say, it's $199. And it's it's probably one of the most awesome setups I've ever used for the price. I mean, a lot of times you'll spend $199 on just a reel, but if you get a chance, you need to check them out. But today, up in the James, like I say, you know, they bit the whopper plopper pretty early. Where, where last week for me, I didn't hardly get any bites on it until after 9 or 10 o'clock. Uh, today, after about 9 o'clock, we went out deeper, caught some on the football jig, and the magnum finesse worm, like I say, the same as, as uh, earlier in the week, 18 to 25 feet, either brush piles or rock piles, and a lot of main lake points, secondary points in the creeks, in Ants Creek itself. Still struggling to try to get any kind of a drop shot by it, or suspended by. Uh, you'll see some fish come up surface in the, in the morning around some of the deep docks and even throughout the day. If, if you get a bait in on top of them right as they come up, seems like I can catch them, but otherwise I haven't been able to throw any kind of bait over the top of that deep water and get the fish to come up. I've tried throwing little swim baits and a flutter spoon to work through them. You can see the fish, they're down there about oh, 15, 12 to 15 foot deep suspended out over them deeper docks. But unless they've got shad up on the surface, uh, I can't really seem to catch them. You know, it's been a struggle to catch a suspended fish. The most consistent bite has still been on the whopper plopper. One that seems to be working the best for me is, 
is that middle size, that 110. And I'm mixing it up quite a bit, different colors. I mean, we threw three or four different colors pretty much non-stop for about two and a half hours today. One of us was throwing one color, the other another. And uh, black seemed to outdo everything today. Uh, we did have a couple fish blow up on like a perch color or the monkey butt. But if we could get the black back in there right after that fish had come up, for some reason they would eat the black one. And a lot of times it seems like it's if you're getting several bites and not so much just on a whopper popper, but whether it's a spinner bait or crank bait, if the fish are swatting at it, missing it, there's usually something wrong, either the color, the size, or the way you're treating the bait. So a lot of times what I usually like to try to do if I if I'm missing a fish on like I say, whatever kind of bait it is, I either change up my retrieve or my action, change color of the bait. Or size of the bait. In, in the case with the whopper plopper, today it seemed to work by going to the black one when they would miss the monkey butt one. So when that happened, we just stayed with the black, and the fish that we caught on it didn't miss it. They just seemed to eat it. But it looks like, you know, tonight's supposed to get down in the 60s. I think as this water cools down, and I am starting to see a lot more shad towards the backs of the creeks. I'm not seeing, you know, any fish chasing them or pushing them up but as it gets cooler you'll start seeing a migration of the bait back into the creeks and some of them may be way back in there so kind of keep checking the backs looking for shad if you see the shad throw a little square bill crankbait maybe even a spinner bait slow rolling underneath them but for the most part i think it's still pretty tough bite uh but you can catch them you just got to work at it to try to catch them so until next week uh, good luck good fishing